The Credit Show podcast with Harry Jacobs starts now. Got some interesting news on what's happening with student loans and payments that are coming due. The suspension of student loans is set to expire here soon. That pause on loan interest and payments and collection, it's now uh, coming to an end, which means that borrowers are going to have to start making payments again. This, of course, is going to, I'm sure, come to the forefront of our discussions here. And there's not a lot of good news, right? The data that's been tracked, the government agency that you hear me talk about often is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And they track and, and, and have been tracking for some time the data related to student loans and how borrowers were doing, even during this period of time when borrowers didn't have to make money. And, and that's why I'm saying, you know, it's not a sign of anything good in the way of news yet. Borrowers are increasingly more likely to struggle with payments, according to a bunch of data. I'm going to give you some facts here that that all all come straight from from them. This is not anything that's my opinion at the moment. I'll share some opinion with you in a second. But more than one in thirteen student loan borrowers are currently behind on their non-student loan payments, which is higher than pre-pandemic levels. So, cars credit cards, any of those things, anything non-student loan related, one in 13 borrowers are are having trouble already. About one in five borrowers have risk factors suggesting that they could struggle when payments are resuming. The median scheduled payments on other debts, that's increased significantly for student loan borrowers, especially on the younger borrowers. We've talked on, on this show, on the podcast, about how younger folks are struggling right now, borrowing more, deeper in debt, and are in trouble. More than 40% of borrowers are going to have new student loan servicers when repayment resumes. And any time servicing changes on a loan, certainly I would imagine this is the case on the younger end, But as adults, we get confused when that happens, when we get a notice that someone else is taking over the loan. Are there there payments that are overlapping? Are we possibly missing a payment, right? Those those are questions that come up. So just under half are going to end up with a new servicer. And certain groups, and, and this group is, you know, 30 to 50 basically, those in higher income areas and those with larger student loan balances, have experienced larger increases in non-student loan delinquencies. Again, this goes back to what I talked about in the beginning. Cars and credit cards and mortgages, all of those delinquencies are higher now than they were pre-pandemic. People that that already struggle with non-student loan payments are definitely likely, and in that group of people, that are going to face difficulties when when the payment pause is over here. Risk factors that may indicate future struggles to the pre-pandemic loan delinquencies, uh, payment assistance, multiple servicers, delinquencies on other credit products, you know, new non-medical collections. Of course, medical sends sends everyone sideways anyway. The share of borrowers with higher monthly non-student loan payments has continued to rise, and they continue to acquire debt. And that's going to complicate things. One of the things that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has done, which is, I think, kind of interesting, is they've de-identified a sample of credit records from one of the bureaus. So they analyzed the credit history of consumers who are expected to get back into the repayment program here in the fall. They've started tracking those consumers that have loans coming due, but were also delinquent in other products. So they're watching those folks. Since March, about 2.5 million student loan borrowers had a delinquency that was in a non-student loan product. It's up about 250000 from about a year ago. So that's where, when I talk about the struggle in, in non-student loan products, that's where that comes from. I do want to take a moment, though, and give you some opinion. I promised a little opinion, wh- whether you want it or not, on the student loan and forgiveness and all that stuff. I don't agree with the concept 
of forgiveness of these loans. I just don't. You know, it's it, it's counter to everything that I believe in as much as I'm pro-consumer. Now, what I do believe in is rolling back the interest rates to make a correction there. See, the student loan interest rates on those Stafford loans, they never mirrored mortgage rates. And I get they weren't set up that way, but the government-sponsored loan has always been significantly higher at in, in, from a cost perspective than regular interest rates. You know, when interest rates were two and a half or three, the, the school student loans, the Stafford loans, were in the sixes and sevens. It's always served as a profit center for years and years for the government. And they could change that retroactively, and that would reduce the amount of debt significantly. I don't want to go too deep into numbers, but I, I think we're in for an ugly surprise on the student loan issue. Mark my words. You've been listening to the Credit Show podcast with Harry Jacobs. If you need assistance with your credit, text CREDIT to 702 778 2000.